Radio Raheem here with Brian McIntyre. Man, you're getting ready for, I would have to say, the hugest fight of your fighter's career. When you look at this matchup with Postal, is that the framework in which you see it? Is this your greatest challenge yet? Well, we don't know about the challenge until we get in there. I mean, he posed, he posed a, a great challenge as f on the paper and what I see in the ring, but you don't know what, what Postal's going to come in there. You know, he might come in there scary. He might, he might come in there, uh, you, you know, uh, very awesome offenses. You know, you don't know until we get in there. You say you see a pose, a challenge posed by what you've seen in the ring. What is it that you've seen from him that makes him dangerous? He got good hands. He got good feet. They work together. Good, good fighter, uh, north and south fighter. Uh, so that's good. That's good. You know, uh, he know how to use his jab. He know how to use his jab with his range. So, you know, that's kind of challenging. Both these fighters have been known, especially recently, for stopping guys, uh, upsets, knocking guys out. Do you feel like this is going to be a chess match, a technical matchup, or is it going to come down to punching power? Uh, me, personally, I believe Terrence is going to dominate the fight, man. You know, uh, once he get in that rhythm, and uh, I don't think Post is going to be able to uh, you know, keep up. Or I, I believe that uh, he's going to gas out. I believe he's going to do a lot of holding. So I don't... I don't I just see Terrence just taking, just taking away the fight, you know, just taking it and running away, running away with it. You said that he may come into the fight scared. You're saying he may do a lot of holding. What makes, what gives you the impression that Post would come in either unprepared or afraid? Uh, just because of the simple fact, just the way he fight. He fight kind of scary. You know, he he jab jab. You know, he throw one or two combinations, then he a hold. And then, and if you look at him, he he'll want the referee to do his job as far as trying to break him up. He won't try to pull away or nothing like that. He'll just go grab, hold, wait, wait for the ref, look at the ref, see if the refs gonna come in. Now, if the fighter tend to other fighter tend to move, he'll move with him real close, stay real close to him. So I'm just that's to me that's fighting scared. He don't he don't want to take he don't want to get he don't want that interaction fighting style. How much credit do you give to Freddie Roach? in the training aspect coming up with a game plan to face you guys to be honest I, I don't give him I don't give him shit man because simple fact he only been with Postal probably what two fights and it takes more than just two fights to try to change a guy and if you look at the two fights that Postal did have with Freddie Roach those guys pretty much tailor made for him come straight for face fighters face face fighting fighters you know, I, I want you, anybody can knock those fighters. I can, with my fat ass, can knock those fighters out. So, I, I, I don't give him, I don't give him shit. As a trainer yourself, and having one of the, you know, rising stars in the sport uh, in your corner, are there trainers that you look at, that you look up to, or um, pattern your style after at all? Well, uh, I do look at like uh, Eddie Futch, Georgie Benton. You know, uh, you know, fighters that. Trainers that have been in the gym with uh, with fighters, not trainers that's come in the last three weeks or two weeks, just try to sharpen the fighter up. I look at uh, the trainers that be in there from day one all the way until they get out of the ring. So no, I don't try to pattern my style behind them. What I just do is, is I just try to listen to them in the corner, go watch old fights and uh, read a lot of old books of uh, old fighters from the Spillman's, Spill, Spillman's gym uh, back in New York, some of them old trainers. You know, just try to get a little, a little knowledge from him. You know, uh, Eddie Futch is the one who brought uh, Freddie Roach in, and it doesn't seem like you have a whole bunch of uh, respect for Freddie. What do you think of him beyond just post all, but in general as a trainer? I don't think about him. out hell with him. I really don't. I, he, he a trainer. He doing what he doing, is supposed to do in the boxing game, and that's it. I don't think about his lifestyle, what he do outside the gym, what he do inside the ring, what he do with other fighters. I don't, I don't, he don't mean nothing to me. And we know that promoters bring the fights to the fighters, but what is the camp like for you guys? Are you involved in selecting opponents or the direction that Crawford wants to take his career to get where he wants to ultimately go? Well, definitely that because uh, we, we'll sit down with top rank. Like earlier this year, we sat down with Todd and, and uh, Carl, and we, wanted to, we mapped out the plan of which way we wanted to go. And as and, uh, far as the opponents go, you know, we just got to take what's available. And we all know a lot of guys don't want to fight Terrence. And uh, Postal came up, his name came up. We say, yeah. They say, yeah. So it's time to go to work. This is a pay per view fight. Uh, you know, obviously, you want to go into every fight with a strategy to win, but there's got to be some added pressure knowing that there's pressure on you to perform and bring numbers. Does that at all affect 
your training or the way you approach the fight? Not at all, man. Not at all. Because of the simple fact, we ain't there to do a job as far as, far as get, getting the job done, uh, having Terrence whoop this dude's ass. Uh, uh, as far as the numbers come in, you know, everybody say the first numbers is always going to be low, but that's not no pressure to us because we, we know we got to do the interviews. We know we got to do the little press conference, the press tours. We know that it's all about it's all about the game. It's all about trying to get the numbers up, talking to the papers. That's all in the game plan. That's all behind what pay-per-view brings. So we set and we got our mindset to that's what we're supposed to do, but we still working at the same time. We still work. We ain't taking no days off. We ain't taking no. Uh, we ain't taking postal lightly. Uh, uh, it's just just time to go to work. You know, lastly, almost anybody in boxing will tell you that the game is mostly mental. With the spotlight on Crawford like it is now, has dealing with his mentality and focus become a greater part of your job? No, man, because Terrence is one of those self-sufficient fighters. He knows what he got to do to get the job done. He knows that he he knows he's got to stick to this, uh, the workout schedule. He knows that uh, he, he got to do he has to do interviews. He knows what he got to do just to get the job done. Pay-per-view, undercard, fighting in the phone booth, fighting behind the store, it don't fucking matter. He going to get the job done. The pressure is not there because we don't even look at it like that. It's just it's just time to go to work. If this fight unfolds, if all the, the training and the game plan that you've put together works out exactly as planned, break down for me how this fight plays out. Just Terrence dominating the fight from round one to the to either he stop him or it goes 12 rounds. Which, which round do you think he'd stop him in? Probably seven or eight. Radio Raheem, um, Brian, listen, man, it's a pleasure to talk to you for the first time. Good luck Saturday night. I, I was just wondering why come you never talked to me before. I've been waiting for this interview. I've been waiting for this interview so long already. I was intimidated. I was intimidated. It's the, it's the first time I had the guts to approach you. <laughs> I appreciate you taking this time, legend. <laughs> See you Saturday night, man. Good luck.